Hey folks, Joseph and Sabori here. I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a sci-fi family fantasy film that came out on December 27, 1985. That was released by New World Pictures, the same distributor that gave us the Peanut Butter Solution, as well as uh, Warriors of the Wind. Yeah, the North American cut version of Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind. And had released several films, which originally... The company was owned by a legendary uh, B-movie uh, filmmaker, Roger Corman. And it's an earlier film that was directed by German director Roland Emmerich. If you're familiar with him, he went on to direct big-budget sci-fi action flicks such as Universal Soldier, Stargate, and Independence Day, which just recently got a new sequel. Independence Day Resurgence, which I don't mind checking that out, even though it is getting bad reviews, sadly. But it's interesting to see the, the cast from the original back again, uh, along with a new cast that's joining in, you know, such as Liam Hensworth, Malcolm Moreau, and Joey Keane. So, who knows? Um, I'll check it out. I just recently got the, the new Blu-ray for Independence Day, so I will review that film later. Well, anyway, I want to review this because I was very curious, and surprisingly enough, I never did saw this movie. I'm, I'm shocked to amaze myself because, I mean, looking at the, the TV spots and the trailers uh, online, it does look very impressive. I mean, the special effects that they used at the time, and and the fact that he actually has uh, telekinesis powers, and he gets to control all the toys, and he has a creepy ventriloquist dummy that's very similar to Slappy from Goosebumps, that almost looks a little bit like uh, George Burns there. <laughs> I feel like, wow, this, this could be an entertaining film. Well... Sort of. It just seems mediocre at best. The acting wasn't that good. It, it tried to be as um, unique as uh, films like E.T. and Poltergeist, because technically this was uh, Roland Emmerich's uh, version of, of those two films, but in a whole different way. Because I don't think I never saw a movie like this. But I would say that a movie that came out in 2007 called The Last Mimsy. Does anybody remember that film? Other than the fact that it was directed by the man who owns New Line Cinema at the time. Yeah, Robert Shea. Which pretty much borrowed elements from those movies. I feel like this is a movie that definitely borrowed elements from this film. But, sad to say, it could have been better. It would have been. But the film is called Making Contact, also known as Joey, in Germany. Um, it stars Joshua Morell, Eva Krill, Tammy Shields, Jan Serwoyd, Barbara Klein, Mephis Kruss, Jerry Hall, Sean Johnson, Christine Gabels, and Punky. Wow, I never thought there was a name Punky <laughs> for an actor. I mean, sure, we have Punky Booster, but there you go. And it's co-written and directed by Roland Emmerich. The movie begins centered around a young nine-year-old boy named Joey Collins, who's played by Joshua Morell, had learned that his father had passed away. He went to a funeral with his mother. Yeah, with... The entire family, you know, greeting him after his total loss. Suddenly, the next night, he was inside his bedroom and falling asleep until he discovers that something strange was about to happen inside his bedroom. He noticed that all the toys were moving by themselves. Yeah, you can see toys like the Donald Duck, Star Wars. And all the rest, yeah, even that, uh, <laughs> the Tomy uh, racing car, 
and even a TV, all, all of that stuff. Tons of dolls moving around. Anyway, he discovers uh, his red toy telephone that was glowing. He picks up the phone and discovers that he's making contact with his father. But suddenly, tons of telephones uh, outside the city that started making all these uh, phone ringing tone noises all, all the way around. You can see all the streets uh, of all the telephone booths. Yeah, which right next to it you can see a Krispy Kreme donut shop. <laughs> His mother discovers him in inside the bedroom because he noticed that he was actually talking to his father. So then the next morning at school which earlier enough uh, he did talk to his friends that he actually made contact with his father but suddenly a bunch of bullies started making fun of him and they even took his egg too by replacing it with a toy egg that has a skeleton and started writing something suspicious he also discovers that he has um, telekinesis powers that he started to use it by taking um, his friend's egg and put it underneath his desk which the teacher accidentally uh, smashed it while he was uh, talking to the bullies about how Joey feels you know, since he just lost his father. Then suddenly he brought in an abandoned ventriloquist dummy that's inside the garage. He brought it inside uh, his bedroom which all of a sudden it was being possessed by an evil spirit so now it actually controls um, Joey by actually threatening his mother you know by using the, all the kitchen knives almost ready to attack her it started flying all the way around the kitchen and luckily you know, she was alive but she didn't even notice until later. Oh, and by the way, the dummy is named Fletcher. So, Joey told Fletcher to stop it. And he did. But he was afraid because he didn't want to lose his mother. So. So then, he decided not to go to school. And he doesn't want to go back because he's, he's going to be making fun of by all the bullies. So he decided to bury the dummy inside his yard, but the teacher finally shows up you know, after he finds out uh, what these bullies were up to. And then he went inside um, Joey's house and you know, talking to his mother and decided to stay over for dinner because after all he did found the dummy, uh, Fletcher. Yeah, and even though his mother did discover that he has telekinesis powers because of because of that one because during that one night uh, during dinner where he uses his uh, powers to grab an ET glass and that's when she noticed it and wow kind of amazed that uh, that he actually discovers those powers yeah the teacher discovers it as well and. He was amazed because now he wants to be able to to talk to him about uh, about his problems, and he thought maybe there might be a, a better solution to it by contacting the, some some of his uh, his friends who are psychiatrists, and maybe someone else, so that way they could help him. Especially after Fletcher was starting to control the entire bedroom and and reveals uh, his secret underneath the closet where it has um, the evil spirits around and yes everything was going really out of control started to uh, take out uh, Joey's mother's car and started moving all the way around and, and crashes in the garage so yeah everything just seems to get stronger and stronger so then, after all of this, um, the teacher decided to contact uh, all the authorities as well so they can help him out. 
before Fletcher continues to to attack everyone around him you know, before it's too late. Well, seeing that this is the first time I've ever seen a film that came out over 30 years ago, and it's the second film that Emmerich has wrote and directed since the Noah Ark's Principal, which I haven't seen. You know, I haven't even seen his earlier work before Universal Soldier and all the rest. I would say it's mediocre at best. It's not horrible, but it's um, a decent movie that deserves its potential. Because the special effects were impressive, I mean, and it's definitely ahead of its time, just like all the other family films uh, of the 80s, as well as the 70s. Well, <laughs> yeah, because we had a lot of those. But this was Emmerich's answer to E.T. with the side of Poltergeist. Because I could tell from those scenes that they were awfully similar to it. But it's an interesting concept. Something I never thought I would see before, but I know I have in later films. Where they actually have a boy with telekinesis powers who suddenly can control everything. Even though it's all the toys were moving by themselves, and the fact that he makes contact using a toy telephone, and suddenly he has a creepy ventriloquist dummy that's being possessed by an evil spirit. That's something I never thought I would see before. But I have seen a lot of later films that seems to copy the idea. But I think this is the first film to actually do so. So. I'll give Emberick some credit for that. It's too bad though because I think the film could have been a whole lot better. But it had its potential. It's just... The acting was bad. I mean, all the actors, I mean, they tried harder to, to make them more believable, but... It just didn't seem to work. But I guess I could see what Emmerich was trying to do. And he tried. Granted speaking, I've yet to see the German version, which is extended. That definitely shows more to the story than what the American cut has gave us. But, however, I, I love some of the funny scenes in the film where they definitely throw in all the Star Wars references. I mean, you can even have all the toys of uh, Donald Duck throw in and and all, all this other stuff that they that they got which yeah there was even a scene where you know during the final climax that uh, you get actually see all the Star Wars toys actually flying around uh, around the hallway uh, as everybody had opened the door yeah, and yeah you saw a lot of toys moving by themselves and you even saw a tiny uh, R2-D2 robot um, moving around. So there you go. <laughs> uh, I, I remember there was a scene where they show a <laughs> a giant uh, hamburger monster that's about to attack the, the fat kid. Um, yeah, who's a bully of course. Yeah, one of the bullies. But then the one bully has his favorite idol which is uh, Darth Vader and the fact that Darth Vader actually moves and he has a lightsaber too <laughs> yeah so there, there's a lot of nod to that and <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of 80s stuff uh, in the mix I can't recommend this movie but I would say this it's worth a look if you're into all the sci-fi fantasy films like E.T. and Poltergeist, as well as Explorers uh, and other um, kids' family films like The Goonies, and I guess you could throw in Fly the Navigator and Space Camp and all the rest. But I would say it's worth a shot. But it deserves better. So, the film is coming out on Blu-ray by Kino Loper sometime later this year. I really hope so. 
So you probably see the film in a high definition master. You'll definitely see two versions if they both come out. Maybe with extras, who knows. So, see for yourself. So anyway, I give Megan Contact, aka Joey, two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.